desire is mainly to dominate everybody. If they go to a village, to a town, they want to monopolize everything in that area. If you put them in a labor camp as a laborer, within a year they will try to emerge as headman of that camp, and so on. Well, in, in the past, our people were not alive to their responsibilities, because you can see from our northernization policy, that in 1952, when I came here, there weren't ten northerners in our civil service here. Then I tried to have it northernized, and now all, all important posts are being held by northerners. Is this policy of filling all key posts in the north solely with northerners and not with other Nigerians a temporary or permanent one? In actual fact, what it is, is a northerner first. If you can't get a northerner, then we take an expatriate like yourself on contract. If we can't, then we can employ another Nigerian, but on contract too. This is going to be permanent, I should say, for the, as far as I can foresee, because it will be rather dangerous to see the number of boys who are now turning from our, all our learning institutions coming out with having no, no work to do. I'm sure whichever government of the day might be, it will uh, feel rather embarrassed and it uh, might even lead to bloodshed. Doesn't this damage the idea, sir, of uh, all people in all regions in, in Nigeria being fellow citizens of one country? Well, it might, but uh, um, you are, an, I mean, new to our region, but how many northerners are employed in the east or in the west? The answer is no. And if there are, there may be ten laborers employed only in the two regions. Can you please give me an account of the night of the coup in Kaduna? Well, it's uh, rather something like the longest day. We started this off on the night of the 13th of January uh, when a night exercise was planned by the military college which I command. Uh, we took our troops to the ground and taught them how to do night attacks. We didn't tell them what we were planning for, but uh, at the end of the exercise, we took them out and showed them various places where they were to stand and just remain in the vehicle. The next day, we went out again for the same type of exercise, and at the end, we issued them with ammunition this time, live ammunition, and told them that they were going back to the same place as they went yesterday, but this time they were to get certain people. And they were with you, were they? Oh, of course they did. Oh, they all supported us. Did the father himself attempt to fight? Well, no. We didn't see him until the time we actually shot him. He ran away from his house when we fired the first few shots of anti-tank gun into the building. The whole roof was blown up and the place was set alight. Then we went to the rear of the house and started searching from room to room until we found him amongst the women and children, hiding himself. So we sort of took, up, took away the women and children and uh, uh, took him. Now what are your relations with General Iramsi in Lagos? Well, very good. He's my boss. I uh, have always been under him and uh, I still am. I still am under him. There isn't really any problem with you. Uh, misunderstandings arose that uh, this, this was due to the publication in the press and by announcements over the radio. At one time, they started calling us in Kaduna rebels. Whereas, in fact, the revolution was all a planned affair all over the country, and uh, many other people were called. Biafra didn't have the weapons to fight a war, but that was not what Ojuku told the world. If civil war comes, and I do think it is imminent, our people have for a long time been prepared for this eventuality, and I am confident of their readiness. 
I think that when it does come, that the people on the other side would be surprised as to what they're going to get. <laughs> On getting home, Awolo would declare his support for the Abri Agreement, one of whose clauses was that northern soldiers occupying western region must return to their homeland in northern Nigeria. Awolo then issued this famous statement, quote, if the eastern region is allowed by acts of omission or commission to secede from or opt out of Nigeria, then the western region and Lagos must also stay out of the federation. End quote. Northern Nigerian soldiers refused to leave western Nigeria. Awolowo, who was saved by the Igbo, formed alliance with the Hausa Fulani, who had been killing his people and occupying their land, and in one of the most dastardly acts in history, urged his Yoruba people to join the Hausa Fulani in slaughtering thousands of Igbo and other people of Eastern region living in Western Nigeria. Marriage is not by force. There is nothing that compels the North and South to be together. Nothing. The case could be Katakikita. If the nation will break, let it break. Marriage is not by force. Hear the voice of the wailing masses. 